Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, by request, I'm going to show you how to paint this leaf that I painted on vacation. And um, so that you can see it, I'm going to draw it fairly darkly with water-soluble um, colored pencils. These are the Spectrum Aqua Blends, which are kind of neat. Um, these are the ones I'm keeping on my table at all times because they're light fast, and that's not something you normally see with a watercolor pencil. So, um, so I'm kind of using these more than anything else at the, at the moment. So the first thing I'm going to do, and if you're at home, you could draw this with a regular pencil, you could draw this on like a scrap paper and transfer with transfer paper or a light box or your window or whatever, um, and that way you can always use your drawing again if you do that. So I'm going to be pretty dark with my lines here, and I am just kind of looking at my leaf and sketching it, but you know what you can do? You can always go outside, pick up a leaf, this is just a maple leaf, and trace it. Um, it may be, like this one's kind of curved and we have a little foreshortening, so that's a little, um, you wouldn't get that from tracing, but if you just want to paint a leaf and you're a little intimidated by the drawing, go ahead and do that because it'll get you to the point where you're painting and tracing will teach you how to draw it. Don't let anybody tell you that it's bad. It's It'll get you there, okay? Um, and then I'm actually going to switch over to the screen one because this, these, uh, these lines are going to liquefy and it's going to mix in with whatever I have for paint. So I want to make sure I don't have uh, any colors where I don't, uh, where I don't want them. Oh, please excuse. I don't know if I mentioned this. Please excuse any weird noises you hear. It is the weekend. There's a, there's a lot of noises <laughs> going on here because my my family's home, and that's a good thing. Okay, so now we are going to wet the area and use some of these colors here. I'm using my Cotman watercolors. They are a student line of paint, so they're not anything crazy expensive. You can find them at any of your craft stores, pretty much. And I'm just using this um, this uh, faux Kalinsky brush. So I'm going to start just by you know, wetting. I want to get these lines, let them um, soften a little bit. Uh, be careful not to wet outside of your leaf because if you do that, um, it's going to feather your colored pencil lines. So what I'm just trying to do is just dance the brush right up against those lines to liquefy my color. On this area here where the leaf is turned, that's going to be light, so I'm just going to leave that alone for right now because I don't want the darker color that I'm going to have on the inside to blend. Now if you are watercoloring and you're a beginner and you're having a hard time with um, your paper pilling, like the paper coming up, um, it may be inexpensive that your paper is um, inexpensive, but it might be your brush is too stiff. So if that happens, try a softer brush. Now, if you're watercoloring and you can't get your colors dark enough, it could be that your brush is too soft and it's just not releasing enough pigment when you go to lift it off the pans. One thing I do if I'm using student grade paints is I will take a spray bottle and I will spray my paints before I begin. And that um, that really helps the, the colors blend. So I'm going to start off with some Cadmium Red Deep. And um, if you're using the American version of the Cotman's, you'll notice that these are actually real cadmiums. If you're using the European version, they use hues. I believe there's like um, more regulations on what they can use in paints. Um, there might have been like a cadmium ban or something at, at one point. So um, so that's the difference between those two sets. And, and I'm using the American set here, which has 24 whole pans. The European set has 45 half pans. They're both fantastic sets. And um, if you shop around, you can get them for a song right now, because I think they're changing their packaging. That's what I've been told. So um, the paint's going to be still good. It's not going to go bad, not with watercolor anyway. So you might as well, you know, if you're looking to buy, buy one's cheaper. I don't need a fancy new palette. I'm more concerned about the paint that's in there than the... Uh, than, you know, how modern my palette is. Um, and I don't mind the plastic. Some people don't like the plastic, but I don't mind it. Now I'm going to go in with some Cad Yellow. Now you will notice, if you're using a Genuine Cadmium versus a Hue, that uh, it's a very strong color. A little bit goes a long way. Um, really high tinting strength, so you can water it down quite a bit, because Cadmium pigments tend to be more opaque on their own, but um, because they're such a bright color and such a strong color, you can you can tint them down, you can add water to them to make them more transparent. They're still nice and bright, and they're also very light fast because they're a, a mineral-based pigment. I'm going to do a little sap green in the middle. <clears throat> now this sap green I have refilled. Um, I know it's going to be strong because it's one that I've refilled with my M. Graham, so I'm tapping it off on my palette a bit just to make sure I don't have any 
um, big globs of paint, they'll be difficult to control. And my my paper's wet, so it's gonna feather. So I don't wanna I don't wanna drag it over the red, or I'm gonna get brown. You can have some brown in your fall leaves. That's totally fine. But I just want to make sure I can control it a little bit. And so this is also the sap green for my brush, but it's also liquefying the the sap green pencil. Now, if all you have is pencils, watercolor pencils, that is a great thing. You can use you can pick up color from the tip of your pencils. Take your wet brush lift it like that and paint right along with me just like you had a pan of paints or you could gently color it in and then you could um and then you could just brush over it with the water i find when i'm using watercolor pencils i prefer a synthetic brush that is like a, a traditional synthetic not a super soft one because it has a harder time dealing with the pigments now i do want a little bit of a brown in there but instead of mixing it on the paper what i'm going to do is take a little bit of that cad red that i was using and mix it in with my brown with my green and see how it makes a pretty brown there now if I want it a little warmer, I'll use more red. I could even add a little yellow in there. Get just the right color that I want. And then I can throw some of that in here and there. I do, it's these neutrals that are gonna make your bright seem brighter. So this is what we call an overall wash. And there's the noise that I was talking about that we probably get. That's the uh, the water pump because our laundry is going. But I'm almost at the point where I need to let this dry anyway. So I'm just going to finish putting in the, this wash of color. And then I will um, pause the video and come back once it's all dry. And another thing I want to point out is that you want this all drying at the same rate. So if you see some parts starting to dry, another part's really wet, then just kind of go in there and and uh, re-wet those areas so they dry at the same rate. Otherwise, you're going to have some backwashes and some blooms, which can be pretty, but for this leaf, it's not really going to go with it. So, uh, so just make sure everything's drying at the same rate. At this point, if you want to adjust your colors, like add more red, you can do that. Just blot your brush if it's really wet, because you do not want to add a bunch of uh, really wet liquid on top of this, or you will get the back runs. All right, so at this point, I'm going to let it dry, and we'll be back um, when this is dry. Okay, this is all dry. The next thing I'm going to do is use a white gel pen and go in and put the veining on my leaf. And feel free to turn your work so that it's comfortable for you to manage. And what this is going to do is give us those nice bright highlights, but they're going to be too bold if we just left them alone. So I kind of like to put them in here at this point because... Um, we can wash over them to tone them down later. So it's kind of a neat trick. Uh, this is just a little greeting card that I'm working on. Um, Strathmore 140 pound watercolor greeting cards and I just get them, um, you can get them in packs of 10, 30, or 100. And since I use these a lot for my uh, free classes I do at the local library, I buy them in packs of 100 because they work out to be about 25 to 30 cents a piece that way and you really just can't beat it. And I do enjoy the paper. I find it's very forgiving for beginners because of the sizing in it. It's just uh, just really easy to lift, especially if you're using like a Cotman watercolor. All right, and if you are looking for classes, speaking of classes, uh, Craftsy has all their classes 50% off this weekend for Labor Day, and I'll put a uh, affiliate link in the video description, and if you purchase anything through that link, it helps my channel, it helps me bring these free tutorials to you every day. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of the Cad Yellow, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of this... Uh, mix that uh, brown mix that I did there to kind of tone it down a bit and we're going to do this turned part of the leaf and I didn't bother pre-wetting it because it's such a small area we don't really need to so I'm just glazing over that just get, or giving it a wash rather and then I gotta let that dry before I do my shadow there so that's what's happening there I actually should have done that wash first because then I could be working on my shadow underneath we can mix up our color for the shadow right now that's not going to take too long to dry I want to give that gel pen plenty of time to dry too. So what we're going to do for our shadow is we're going to take the um, we're going to take some ultramarine blue, and we're going to take some burnt sienna, or you could use um, light red. You could use um, English red. Anything that's a like kind of a reddish brown. Most of those browns use the pigment PR101, and um, you can balance them out really well to get a really nice. A uh, really nice gray to a purpley gray to a warm brown, you know, just depending on how you balance those colors and how fine the pigments ground. Alright, so what I'm going to do is just zap that with a heat tool for a sec. <coughs> Excuse 
excuse my cough, it's it's early, I'm still a little froggy. All right, that's dry. And I am gonna wet the area where I wanna put the shadow. Okay. I'm not gonna wet the stem area yet because I'm just gonna, I'll do that because it's such a fine area. I'll do that on its own. But I'm just gonna go in and wet this area here. Now the uh, the paper I worked on for this, and I'll just pull this over so you can see it, was the uh, Fabriano Studio, which is, I think if you if you need to get enough, like a, a cheap paper for practice, that is probably the cheapest you can get that is decent quality. And um, you can get it in 75 sheets of 90 pound, or you can get it in um, 50 sheets of uh, 140 pound and it's it's just it's a really good value it's 25 percent cotton and it won't take a ton of abuse and scrubbing but it's not bad so that's my little pick there if you're looking for an inexpensive practice paper or paper to swatch your colors on that sort of thing all right so I'm rewetting this area I can see it's already the pit the water's already dried up a little bit and now I'm gonna go in with my with my mix and you want to make sure you definitely have enough there so that you're not you don't have to remix in the middle of your of your wash here before it dries i am going to go ahead and throw this shadow in there i want it to connect at the end and i'm just bringing it back out there i could see i probably used light red in that mix rather than burnt sienna because it does have more of a purple cast to it either way it's totally fine and just putting it darker up against the leaf and letting it kind of fade out it's, it's so much more uh, forgiving to do a, um, a faded wash than it is to try to do one that's super, uh, that's, you know, super hard edged because then it tends to look a little, if you don't have it exactly right, it looks very uh, fake. Now I'm just kind of pulling out the color a little bit while I have less of my brush just to give it a softer edge. I want a little more blue in that, I think, because I think it's going to look nicer. So I'm soaking that right up into my brush. I'm going to add that closer to the leaf, and that's just going to make the color pop a little bit more because it's um, it's a complement. Blue and orange are complements, so they're going to give you a little bit more of a bold color. There we go. Just a little bit in there, too. And we're going to let that dry. While that's drying, though, we can go ahead and work some more on the flower not the flower, the leaf, oh my goodness. I'm gonna go in with some old, uh, some sap green. Maybe add a little touch of blue to it since I've already added that in the shadow. I want it to appear elsewhere in the picture. And I'm gonna darken up a little bit on the stem there. And I'm gonna add a little bit in on my veins. Remember, we're just suggesting detail here. I think where a lot of people get in trouble when they're watercoloring is they try to paint in every last detail and that's fine like if you're if you are just doing one small thing like a strawberry or a raspberry and you just want to super super detail it um but i find i like watercolor a little bit better when it's a little more suggestive and loose and now i'm going to take some of the cad yellow it's such a pretty color and i'm going to wash over some areas with that and if it touches onto that green that's fine this is gonna, this is kind of a glaze. I'm trying not to disturb the color underneath too much, but I wanna kind of intensify it, maybe knock down some of the white gel pen a bit. A little bit on this upturned leaf. Just be careful not to get into your wet wash there underneath it. You do have to watch out for that area there. There we go. And you can see I'm not being that fussy about it. Grab a little bit of that red. Now when you mix warm colors together, like a warm yellow and a warm red, you get very vibrant colors. When you mix a warm and a cool to together, you get more muted colors. So if I was to mix cadmium red, which is a warm red with phthalo blue, I would get a kind of a muddy purple. I like to think of it though, um, more of like just mixing on the color wheel. You mix your color friends together, the colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, you get vibrant colors. You mix, you mix your, you know, distant cousins on the color wheel, you get muted colors. That's how I like to think of it. But if that helps you remember, I just read that somewhere. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. That might help some people remember. So I thought I would pass it along. And then I'm going to do a little bit of this red on the, the stem too, because that will help darken bits of it. 
and I think I'll switch over to a smaller brush so I won't put so much pigment down and I'm going to go back in with that yellow and brighten up part of the stem as well. Just maybe just do it right on the edge so some of it will kind of sparkle out. And then we're going to need to let this dry again so we can put our final details on. Now I painted this, I was sitting out by the campfire, I picked up a few leaves that had already turned, and I have no idea how long it took me to paint this. I just had fun and I wasn't like, you know, trying to paint it super fast or anything, so just kind of keep that in mind. Here you can see what I mean about cadmiums being very opaque. I can kind of dab in these colors and they're, they're like showing up on top of the wash underneath. So it's kind of a handy thing to, to know. Grab, I'll make myself a little mud here because I want a shadow in here. So yeah, we call it mud if it's not what we want. We call it making a neutral if it is what we want. <laughs> Purposeful mud. And you can't get into too much trouble with a small brush at this stage of the game. And oh, maybe a few other little darker passages over here. So anything I'm painting now is stuff I'm okay with it getting being blurry and smudging out. But I don't want to put those really dark shapes in there yet because the paper's wet and it's not gonna it, it will be muddy and it won't give me that crisp line that I desire. And maybe just a little bit more of that red. Red's my favorite color, so I'm always like trying to sneak a little more in there. You don't have to put so much in there if you don't like it, but I love the red. Okay, so we're going to let this dry and be right back in a minute. Okay, our finest, our finest, our finest, our final <laughs> layer. We could do two things to make our dark. So I'm going to show you one. One would be mixing opposites. So we take our red that we've been using and we add some sap green to it. Those are the, those are probably our two most opposite colors. And look at that. It makes a really nice, rich, chocolatey, dark brown color. The other thing we could do would be ultramarine blue and burnt sienna like we did for our shadow. Completely fine, whichever we want to do there. This one is really dark, so I'm just going to go with it because I can tell it's going to look good, and that way I don't waste paint. Um, even though this is a student grade paint and I have, you know, enough paint to choke a horse, I still do not waste it. I mean, why, why would I? So, and I already showed you how to mix up that dark color. I feel like I want a few more of those dark specks over here. I don't know what they are, really, if they're like bug eggs or um, or what they are, but you see them on leaves a lot when you take the time to go pick up some leaves um, and paint from them, which I highly recommend. That's what I recommend. Learn the techniques here. Maybe even paint along with me. Pause the video as needed, but then go pick up a leaf and see what it looks like and really observe it and uh, and paint your own from nature. I hope you found this helpful. I'll put a, I'll put a list of supplies that I used in the video description. Um, I will put links to to uh, these products. These, you, these are usually on sale at Hallmark Scrapbook, which is nice. Simon Says Stamp also carries it, so if you prefer uh, to buy them there. I haven't seen the big art supply stores carrying the Spectrum Aqua Blends. Uh, they are marketed more towards crafters, but I love that they're light fast and they're so affordable. So I would definitely give them a look if you're looking for watercolor pencils. If you already have watercolor pencils, use what you have. You do not need to go buy new ones. You're just sketching a line here, basically, so it's not like you really need these to be uh, light fast. Um, and you could always draw that with a regular pencil too. Please don't feel like you have to go buy something special. Use what you have, but I will put links if you are in the mood to do some shopping. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this with your crafty friends. Until next time, happy crafting.